Hello and welcome to the conversation here inside theCUBE. We're in Palo Alto, I'm John Furrier, part of our ongoing cloud, conquering the cloud coverage. And of course, we have the RSA conference happening in San Francisco and we're going to be covering wall to wall. Our next guest to, to get a reaction to what's happening in the cloud is Vikas Anand, who's the Vice President of Product Management at Oracle, uh, also um, uh, the cloud side. So really, none of the markets are really on the development side. Uh, guess welcome to the CUBE conversation. Thank you, John. I'm um, really excited to be here. We've been following, uh, we've, like, this is our eighth season with the CUBE, so you know we've been at every Oracle open world for, for eight, this will be our eighth year coming up. It's been interesting to watch the, the transformation of Oracle. It's almost that Larry Ellison moment where he knew the cloud was there, that next year came out, it was all about cloud. And since then, it's been absolutely pretty much all cloud. This year is pretty obvious that it's end-to-end -end cloud, on-prem, and public cloud all Oracle, but yet there's also new non-Oracle opportunities you guys are getting called cloud native. Um, where is the product development areas? Because right now the, it's certainly in the backdrop with security and RSA going on, you're seeing the surface area for vectors attacks or, or there's no more perimeter. You have cloud now uh, breaks that perimeter concept. What are you guys working on? What's the top, top things? You, John, that's actually a great segue into the area that I operate in, right? Like you just said, uh, Cloud is, is spanning the hybrid, right? You're basically running SaaS applications for your business, and you obviously have to go and communicate back with on-premise applications, as well as uh, you know integrate with an ecosystem of devices and social and other things, right? Um, so the cloud is spanning, the vector is spanned from the public applications with SaaS uh, to cloud native applications that people use to build engagement models with microservices. Uh, and of course, all of this needs to go back to something which you might be already running as a customer on premise uh, as a hybrid. So I run product management at Oracle for one of the hottest areas, which is the integration mm -hmm. space, right? I own integration process and API management from a product portfolio perspective. Uh, and uh, we, we have a significant investment in this area, uh, given that Oracle is uh, one of the largest SaaS companies out there. Uh, integration is key to enable these applications to be able to uh, deliver the value to our customers. Uh, and we are focused on uh, three things. Uh, mm -hmm. To simplify the hard, which is, you know, integration is a hard problem. So uh, do what we can to do simplify that for our customers mm -hmm. so uh, that they can use that for innovation and accelerate the value to the business. Oracle, certainly you guys have certainly a great database position. I've always said it's the, the mother of all lock-ins and I think that's you know uh, really with the opportunity. But database isn't just Oracle now, you have other databases. So integration I can see is a big part of kind of Oracle moving out of your core swim lane into you know database areas that are not necessarily Oracle or Oracle other databases. So the question is, the, the DevOps movement has kind of proven that it's probably easier to sling APIs around than build full functional stacks. So the integration becomes really more of a competitive opportunity for folks who in IT and or developers because if you can have a core software stack, then the advantage is not to build it at scale because scale is the real challenge. It's the integration and slinging APIs around. So, okay, how do you make that into reality? Okay, because that conceptually people get that Yes. Is leverage there with APIs yes. and, and connecting the data from different data sources? Certainly needs system of record, system of engagement, system of AI or cognitive or whatever people call it. But sure. at the end of the day, this is an architectural concept. So it is. So people in systems management or any kind of operating system background can get this. Yes. How do you deploy it for the common IT and enterprise? Sure, so uh, you know, from what we've tried to do for our customers is really, first of all, when you look at the area of integration, integration spans APIs, integration spans the classical integration needs of business which used to be files or real-time integration. And of course this ecosystem includes, a, uh, uh, it's a pretty complex world out there, right? There are 2300 plus SaaS applications. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are non-Oracle. So it's also about interoperating, interoperating with other SaaS products, uh, other APIs, mm -hmm. the same way as we do for Oracle. So what we've done for our customers is really uh, delivered the service with a SaaS-like experience where Oracle manages it. So we manage the DevOps of delivering uh, the service as a, uh, as a SaaS-like experience. We patch it for our customers. Customers consume it to build integrations. And uh, customers can discover APIs for Oracle applications uh, through our you know, uh, uh, API catalog as well as the integration portfolio. Now, tying it back, uh, uh, to, to the third party, of course, you need rich connectivity. So we have 
really rich cloud adapters to talk to Salesforce, NetSuite, you know, applications mm -hmm. uh, which really uh, are in ERP space or CRM space, some of them Oracle and some of them non-Oracle, right? So um, we have that as a part of our portfolio. Uh, API, you know, APIs is, a, is, is really interesting because uh, a lot of times APIs were built bottom up, which meant that they were not designed uh, for the experience that you were looking to deliver. Mm -hmm. And people today are generally using APIs for four things, one of four things, right? Either to create uh, a net new business model, so net new revenue opportunity. Mm -hmm. For example, delivering a new mobile application which exposes your IP, mm -hmm. right? Uh, number two is to deliver more customer satisfaction and experience as an engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, number three is for operational efficiencies. Uh, number four is, is to communicate with the partner ecosystem. So when you look at APIs, the proliferation is out there, a lot of APIs. It's manifested into this net new requirement of API management, but more importantly, to design APIs right. The API first strategy, mm -hmm. which is uh, really key to the success of an API management story. So the organic growth of APIs really points to the value of APIs, as you point out, but the diverse use cases that have been developing kind of is situational. So the management of APIs has been kind of situational. Absolutely. So now as you move beyond that, where's that new hardening? I mean, is there any best practices that you see for folks that uh, say, hey, you know what? Okay, we've done some bottoms up APIs. It's been great efficiency. We've gotten more from less, more functionality more business models, more integration. Sure. Okay, but bottom line is the core of my strategy is how we're going to share data. Sure. Now you're talking about connectors being key, you know, passing of parameters between multiple systems that maybe certainly within Oracle, I can see you guys doing well there, but not on Oracle. Yes. How does that play out? Uh, so there are, uh, again, you know, uh, you bring a great point again. I mean, the APIs with bottom up always helped with the reuse of the API but it's not always a, a business benefit. It might have been an IT benefit, right? So the top-down approach is becoming more prominent. And this is where we've done a very interesting acquisition. We've acquired a startup in this space, a company called Apiary, mm -hmm. apiary.io, mm -hmm. which is available for developers for free. You know, you can log in and get an account there, uh, which Really this one was announced on, in January that you guys are now closing. Absolutely. Okay. And this is really focused on the concept of API design and governance to manage the API proliferation and sprawl that you have within yeah. the enterprise, right? Uh, and um, uh, of course, everybody has, uh, you know, from an API strategy perspective, security management uh, and analytics is a part of a strategy. The yeah. part which is missed out is design and governance. So, so well, I mean, we certainly that. APIs being a bottoms up thing and like open source always gets better over time, yes. as we all know, the security holes are, are, are potentially um, a red, a blind spot for IT, right? Yes. So, or any enterprise. So the auditing, this, there's that governance thing. Is that what we're, that you're referring to more of the stability side of it? So it's basically, you know, when you look at, let's take an example, you design a car first, right? You don't design a car just because you like a tire or you like uh, mm -hmm. an engine, right? It's primarily, you get the design first right, and then you put the infrastructure in place. So similarly with the uh, APIs, it's becoming more like you get the right API design and definition, you quickly prototype, right? Just like a car, you mm -hmm. design, you prototype, right? You quickly prototype the API, you run mock testing and see the end results before you get into the implementation. Mm -hmm which really changes the game plan of how you deal with APIs going forward. And that's something which we uh, bridged in with the API acquisition into the Oracle API management strategy. So if a customer asked you, let's just say that, uh, I, I asked Ms. Avery this on theCUBE as well and he had a great answer, uh, but I want to kind of refresh it now as we get more, as the evolution of the industry continues to go at a rapid pace, certainly security is a big one. Mark already even talked about encryption right. in a big way, certainly John Fowler's encryption on a chip thing is uh, certainly might be, be, be a really big deal too. But if a customer asked you, because tell me about like, what's the core guiding principle that you guys are taking at Oracle because I need to cross to the bridge, cross that bridge to the cloud, and I don't want anything to break, but yet I want the headroom of all this new functionality. What is Oracle doing? What is the core tenets of your design and your product development? How would you uh, respond to that? Uh, you know, from our uh, strategy perspective, uh, uh, and since I'm, you know, we're talking about APD, API management, yeah. let, let me just focus on this as the, uh, the and, and apply the Oracle tenets here, right? Uh, obviously, number one is to deliver a secure environment 
for customers to be managed, to be able to manage and expose their APIs, mm -hmm. whether they run it on the Oracle Cloud or on their, in their data center. So security is a, is a tenant, uh, is a very important tenant over there. Uh, uh, the, uh, the ability to uh, use the cloud for productivity and innovation mm -hmm. with, uh, uh, with APIs, uh, so high productivity is a, is a part of the tenant that we are trying to, we're offering as a part of our cloud services. Uh, and then of course hybrid, so you should be able to run your APIs, whether it's on Oracle Cloud, whether it's uh, on-premise, or anywhere else. So with our API strategy, as an example, we're really focused on delivering a true hybrid experience. Uh, it doesn't matter where your gateways are, whether it's on-premise, on Oracle Cloud, or third-party cloud, mm -hmm. you're able to manage it seamlessly from the Oracle Cloud environment, and able to expose it in a secure way to your end consumers as well as your partners. I asked Mark Hurd this question, I'll, I'll ask you, and I know he, uh, he's, he's the CEO, so he had a good answer, he could, see, he could answer it. But th this comes up a lot, and you guys have the ability to run Oracle on Amazon. Uh, Andy Jassy's been very vocal recently, he was in uh, on GeekWire, saw that last week, criticizing Oracle, kind of calling Oracle the old way, the old guard, he used the word old guard. Um, how do you respond to that? How does, or how, I mean, you guys are doing some pretty cutting edge stuff with APIs, as Amazon's you know, got the lead right now on the public cloud, but your version of public cloud is may or may not be different, but how do you answer, how do you, how do you answer that, uh, that, that charge at Oracle's the old guard? Uh, you know, it's interesting, uh, you should have been at the Developer Week conference that we presented at yesterday, uh, you know, uh, me and Amit and a few of my colleagues from Oracle product management were out there on stage. We would have loved we, to, we didn't get an invite. Yeah. Next time, make sure we're invited. <laughs> we would have loved to have been there. We, we presented this whole storyboard where we actually demoed live uh, a use case where you would be able to buy tickets to a Warrior game through a chatbot. And it was ball, built upon an, uh, a modern IT architecture on the Oracle stack, right from API mm -hmm. design to the backend microservice running on cloud containers where developers have a choice to bring their own favorite tools, uh, Maven, you know, uh, Git, yeah, yeah. Docker images, uh, with the container cloud. So this is your integration story. With this is back to your... With microservices, which is basically app development, yeah. and then uh, a bot, yeah. which was exposing it uh, for the consumer experience. So uh, the modern tools that the developers of today are looking for with the uh, uh, APIs with microservices, with artificial intelligence, right, are enabled and available on the cloud uh, in a modern uh, uh, infrastructure enabled. Uh, so this is the new use. development phenomenon. I've been saying this for years. I'm an OS guy, but my computer science degree is operating systems as well as databases. But I mean, back then databases weren't really that big of a deal, but now they are. So like, it's, it's hard to be a database guy, but it's a composable, it's a system integration kind of concept if you think about the old system integration world that Oracle really rode the back on the growth on was you know, the big six accounting firms and then the big global integrators. Now that's the developer. The single developer can simply integrate and compose, I won't say object oriented, but that kind of concept of saying, hey, I'm going to reuse this. Absolutely. And they need some solid stability. So I think the game is changing. And I think Amazon certainly has shown a great lead and we're big fans of what they're doing. But as the enterprise gets more complex, the question that we're looking at is, what does the new modern developer look like in a operating, global operating environment called the internet? Your thoughts, final question. What's that, what's that do you agree with that th premise that it's a composable world out there and that this is a design re reinvention of what design architecture looks like and uh, the building blocks are going to be recast uh, in different ways. Do you believe that or do you have any uh, no, opinion? I, I absolutely believe in that. I think the, the, the essence of today's app development is speed, right? Uh, speed to build, speed to deploy, speed to continuously integrate, uh, speed to value to business, right? Uh, and for that, the, uh, the building blocks really have evolved to be microservices, app, you know, APIs, uh, bots, and of course, uh, integration kind of binds all of this together, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, it is a- Sounds like an operating system to me. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like, yeah, it does. It, it is a, you know, the, the, the role of the integrator is right high up there uh, okay. to bind all these, uh, uh, these modern IT architecture components together. 
but it is truly a composable uh, framework of applications. And uh, productivity is key in each of these areas. Because we're looking forward area. to hearing more about the, uh, when you close this acquisition, more on the integration. And next time you guys have a, a, a development week or uh, with Amit and the team, let us know. We'd be happy to come down and at least get some footage. Really, really important area. You guys are doing a lot of work. People see Oracle, they know Oracle. Um, uh, and you guys got a lot of development going. It's important that we keep track of that. Thanks for sharing in this CUBE conversation. Thanks, uh, thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm John Furrier, live, live in Silicon Valley. This is for RSA this week. We're here at the CUBE conversation with Oracle. We'll be right back with more. Thanks for watching. Oh.